Note to learner, this video provides content that will be hosted on the Ginny May LMS in the near future. In this video, you will not be able to interact with screen content to include selecting pop-ups, launching resource hyperlinks, and answering knowledge check questions. Nonetheless, you will be presented with all of the content presented in the interactive e-learning training. Though the audio narration may request that you select items or buttons on the screen, please pause the video to read the content and then select play to continue with the video. When the video advances to a knowledge check, please pause the video and try to answer the question in your head. Select play to see the correct answer or answers to the question. Welcome to the external user e-learning training for Ginny Mae Central's financials module. The aim of this training is to provide an in-depth understanding of the financials review process. This includes the life cycle of a review, essential documentation, and the personnel involved. We will also delve into the initial and final review ratings. Reviews are created annually upon an issuer's fiscal year end. Issuers must coordinate with their organization admins to maintain My Ginny May roles for all users who will participate in annual financial submissions to Ginny May. Here is an overview of the financials review lifecycle. The financials lifecycle contains seven phases from not started to complete. This e-learning will cover each phase in depth. Throughout this training, you will see demonstrations on how each action is performed in the application. Now try this knowledge check. Now try this knowledge check. The first phase of the financials review lifecycle is the not started phase. You've reached this milestone when a review has been created upon an issuer's fiscal year end date. The main actions in this milestone include submitting an extension request and certifying to the extension request as an authorized signer. Helpful tip, issuers can only submit an extension request up to 15 days before the current submission due date. In other words, the issuer will not be able to submit an extension request if the due date is in 15 days or less. Issuers may request a maximum 30-day extension. Quick reference cards were created to provide a step-by-step -step visual aid for these key actions. Submit extension request. Issuers have the ability to submit a financials extension request to allow for more time to submit and deliver their audited financial statement package to Ginny May. Let's see this in action in the financials module. I am logged in as an issuer's basic user. To submit an extension request, I will select into the current submission information card. From here, I will navigate to the related actions tab. I will then select request an extension. I must upload my interim financial statement. I will then enter the requested due date. Again, this can be no more than 30 days from the current due date. I must provide a reason for the extension and answer the subsequent questions. I must then enter the auditing firm information. Once all required fields are complete, I will select Create Extension Request.
Once I have requested the extension as an issuer's basic user, I must then send it for certification. To do this, I must select back into the current submission card. From here, I will notice the extension request tab is now visible. On the extension request tab, to send the extension request for certification, I must select into the ID link. Once I have reviewed the extension request information, I may send it for certification. I will be prompted with a confirmation message. Once ready, I will select send for certification. Certify to AFS extension request. Once requested, the authorized signer must review and certify to the extension. Let's see this in action in the financials module. I am logged in as an issuer's authorized signer. I will notice the certify extension request task on my homepage. I must accept this task before completing it. Once I have reviewed the extension request information, I may select sign. From here, I will select certify extension request. I will be prompted with a confirmation message that after proceeding, I will need to authenticate via RSA token secure ID to finalize certification. I must then open the RSA secure ID app and enter in the eight digit number that displays on the screen. Once authentication is successful, I may submit and complete certification. The second phase of the financials review lifecycle is the questionnaire phase. You've reached this milestone when the issuer begins to fill out the AFS questionnaire form. The main actions in this milestone include a basic user completing AFS questionnaire. Helpful tip. Responses to the questionnaire will impact the package sections required to, to be completed by the issuer. Quick reference cards were created to provide a step-by-step -step visual aid for these key actions, completing questionnaire. Issuer's basic user must complete the AFS questionnaire form. Let's see this in action in the financials module. I am logged in as an issuer's basic user. I will select into the current submission card. I will then select the questionnaire tab. To work on the questionnaire, I will select the button in the top right corner. I must upload my issuer's audited financial statement. I must enter the audit opinion received. I will then answer all the required questions. Once all required fields are complete, I may select Submit Questionnaire. The third phase of the financials review lifecycle is the package assembly phase. You've reached this milestone when the AFS questionnaire is complete. The main actions in this milestone include completing each AFS package section. Helpful tip, all package sections must be complete in order to send for certification. Quick reference cards were created to provide a step-by-step -step visual aid for these key actions completing AFS submission. Issuers must complete each AFS package section in the application. Let's see this in action in the financials module. I am logged in as an issuer's basic user. 
I will select the package sections tab. I will then notice each package section that must be completed by my issuer's basic user. I will only be able to proceed once each package section is complete. Financial statements. To begin completing this package section, I must select work section. I must then enter the starting page number for the balance sheet. I must enter my issuer's total assets as indicated in the audited financial statement, as well as total liabilities and total equity. Indicate if there was a subsequent event note included in your audited financial statement. If yes, provide a description of the nature of the event and estimate of the financial effect. Additionally, please provide the page number where this is located in your audited financial statement. I must then enter in my issuer's net income or loss. If loss, please enter a negative value before the figure. Once complete, Select Complete Section. Adjusted Net Worth Requirement. I must indicate the starting page number for the adjusted net worth schedule, as well as the total equity. Please add all unacceptable assets Include the name and amount for each. Refer to the link below, HUD Audit Guide Attachment A, for additional information. Please enter the required net worth. Once all fields are complete, select Complete Section. Liquid Asset Requirement. Indicate the starting page number for the Liquid Asset Requirement Schedule. Add liquid assets from the drop down list and enter the amount for each one. The required liquid asset amount must be greater than or equal to the total liquid assets entered. Indicate whether the issuer meets all applicable liquidity requirements. Once complete, select Complete Section. Capital requirement. Enter the page numbers where the capital requirements schedule is located in your audited financial statement. For non-depository issuers, you must enter the total adjusted net worth and total assets. For depository issuers, you must indicate whether your issuer as of this fiscal year end meets all regulatory requirements to be considered at least well capitalized.
as outlined in APM 2208. Once all required fields are complete, select Complete Section. Insurance Requirement. Enter the page number of the insurance schedule where the UPB figure appears as listed in your audited financial statement. Provide the total servicing portfolio UPB of your issuer. Once all required fields are complete, select Complete Section. Test of Compliance. Enter the starting page number where the Test of Compliance section is located in your audited financial statement. Indicate if the issuer's Ginny Mae program is listed as a major HUD program. For additional information on major program requirements, please refer to the HUD Audit Guide Chapter 1-3B. Indicate whether material weaknesses were found and indicate if significant deficiencies were found. Once all required fields are complete, select Complete Section. Internal controls. Enter the page number for internal controls as indicated in your audited financial statement. Indicate whether material weaknesses were found and significant deficiencies, if any. Once complete, select Complete Section. Emphasis of matter. The final package section is the emphasis of matter section. Indicate if there is an emphasis of matter paragraph included in your audited financial statement. Once all package sections have been completed, you will notice a Send for Certification button is now visible in the top right corner. Select this button to send this package to your issuer's authorized signer for certification and delivery to Ginny Mae. Now try this knowledge check. The fourth phase of the financials review life cycle is the ready for certification phase. You've reached this milestone when the AFS package is complete and sent for certification. The main actions in this milestone include the authorized signer certifying to the AFS submission and delivering it to Ginny Mae. Quick reference cards were created to provide a step-by-step -step visual aid for these key actions. Certify to AFS submission and deliver to Ginny Mae. Once the basic user completes the AFS package section and sends for certification, the authorized signer must review the information provided, certify to its completeness and accuracy, and deliver it to Ginny Mae. Let's see this in action in the financials module. I am logged in as an issuer's authorized signer. I will notice Certify AFS Submission Task on my homepage. I must accept this task before completing it. After I have reviewed all the information submitted by my issuer's basic user, I may select Certify Submission. I will be prompted with certification language provided by Ginny May. Once reviewed, I must sign the form. I will then select Certify Submission. 
I will be prompted with a confirmation message. After proceeding, you will need to authenticate via RSA token secure ID to finalize certification. I will then open the RSA Secure ID Authenticate app and enter the eight digit number that displays on the screen. Once authentication is successful, I may select Submit and complete certification. The fifth phase of the financials review life cycle is the pending phase. You've reached this milestone once you have successfully delivered your AFS submission to Ginny May. The main actions in this milestone include the workflow lead assigning the financials review to a reviewer. There is no action for the issuer during this phase. The action is on the review team. The sixth phase of the financials review life cycle is the in review phase. You've reached this milestone when a reviewer is assigned to the financials review. The main actions in this milestone include the reviewer beginning the financials review. There is no action for the issuer during this time. The action is on the review team. The seventh phase of the financials review life cycle is the complete phase. You've reached this milestone when the review is complete. There are no further actions that can be taken on this review. The issuer's basic user and authorized signer may view the AFS rating on their issuer's profile page. Helpful tip. AFS rating is generated once review has been completed by Ginny May. Now try this knowledge check. The goal of this training module was to offer a comprehensive overview of the financials review process. You've explored the financials review lifecycle, examining the requirements and outputs for each phase. Additionally, you've seen how these actions are performed in the financials module to drive a Ginny May financials review from start to finish.